Pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Uh, oxygen. Tested 100%. Tested 100%. Flight instruments. Heading 254. Standby 254. Altimeter QNH 1007 30 feet. Standby 1007 40 feet. Headings 254. Altimeter 1007 30 feet. Function. So compare calculation. As a bet. Compare calculation, yeah, I'll accept that. Okay, no mismatches. No mismatches, okay. No good. Okay, flaps 20 takeoff, runway 07 left, takeoff gross weight 426.5, engine out acceleration height 1400. Ready for a brief. Ready for the brief. All right, uh, we're cleared to Anchorage, runway 07 left, off the Rassi 1 Zulu departure, squawk 3542, climb 5000 feet. Okay. The Rassi 1 Zulu is on 10 3. Tango 2, uh, followed by the Victor 3 transition on 10 3 X ray 3. X ray 3. Uh, terrain significant around Hong Kong. Uh, the MSA is 4,300 feet. We'll call that the brief terrain altitude. Yeah. That's Charlie 1. Charlie 1, yep. And OPT is completed uh, with the 600 uh, buffer. We want to see 427.1. Should be no problem with the long taxi. Check. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Anything to add? No questions, no additions. That's All good. right, perfect. Hi, guys. So um, this is uh, Cathay Pacific Boeing 747-8F. And we're out at Hong Kong. We're proceeding now to uh, Anchorage. Flight time is just over 9 hours and uh, 30 minutes. It's actually 9 hours 32 for today. It's a nighttime departure. In fact, early morning as it is. It's just gone. It's uh, 10 past 1 in the morning. So we're doing the uh, red eye, if you like. Uh, doing this sector, flying today is uh, Dushant Merotra. He's going to be the uh, pilot flying for this sector to Anchorage. And uh, I'm the commander of the airplane. My name is Obet Mazini. And at the back there, we've got Gary, who's the uh, second officer that will be assisting us. Um, there's only three crew on this flight. So we're at gate Delta 324. We've just done our pre-flight checklist. And we've just completed our briefing as well. And we're just about to now put the uh, figures in, which is, gives us the actual takeoff speeds. And um, the required uh, weights will be in there as well. And then we're ready to go. We'll be ready to, to, do, to do a before start checklist and then uh, push back and be on our way. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, ground red, right, set 3507, and uh, good morning on uh, four shot. On change, right? Alpha. Right, 3507, one minute ahead. The tango yeah. hold shot of attack. Same, good to start all engines, Captain. Great start all engines, thank you. Standard start sequence, engines four and three, followed by one and two packs off. Packs off, start engine number four and three. Start number four. Where to start engine number four and number three? Thank you. Start number three, engine. Start number one and two. Start number one, engine. Where to start one and two, sir? Start number two, engine. Thank you. Alright, sound at 837, number 1 to the A300 on your right. Number 1 to the Airbus 300 on the right, we'll be turning right on hotel, Emirates 9837. Zulu Echo Bravo 6, all shot Alpha. Zulu Echo Bravo 6, all shot Alpha, Hong Kong 326. Greater Bay 662, contact ground 122.15. Controls neutral. 524, contact departure 123.8. 1238, good morning, Cathay 524. Good morning. Cathay 2090, service wind 100 degrees 7 knots, runway 07 left, clear for takeoff. Runway 07 left, clear for takeoff, Cathay 2090. Set thrust. Emirates 9837, line up runway 07 left. 
Emirates line up and wait on way 07 left, Emirates 9837. Set. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. Here up. Here up. Allow check. Crosswave Vino Speed. Cathay 2090, contact departure 123 decimal 8. Departure 123 decimal 8, Cathay 2090. Emirates 9837, service wind 100 degrees 9 and ops, runway 07 left, clear for takeoff. Departure morning, Cathay 2090, passing 1300 for 5000. Good evening, Emirates 9837 Heavy, passing 1,700, climbing 5,000, Pecan 1 Zulu. G'day guys, uh, my name is First Officer Dushant, I'm with Cathay Pacific. Uh, we've just reached our cruising level uh, now, just past Taipei type, type um, on the way to Anchorage. Uh, as you would have seen, uh, initially we were parked at uh, Bay Delta 324 here at Hong Kong International Airport. Uh, new runway opened earlier this year, runway 7 left, and as you can see it's quite a fair way from where we were parked, so it was a nice long taxi out, um, that was our routing basically on the way out to uh, runway 07 left. Once we uh, got to our holding point we lined up and uh, departed off the Rassi 1 X-ray. Um, so that chart basically has a few restrictions on the departure. Um, we have a pretty early right turn because there's a lot of high terrain here around Hong Kong. Uh, we have a speed restriction there at 220 knots and that's mainly to keep the turn tight to avoid the terrain. And um, once we're on the uh, departure there, there's a requirement to cruise um, at flight level 310 by Envar. It's quite a busy route, this one, because uh, all that, all that traffic going to North America fly on this route. Um, and in, you also see aircraft going on this route to Japan. So we followed an aircraft, the Cathay Pacific A350, um, on the way uh, to Anchorage on this route as well. And um, we had a couple of uh, altitude restrictions there just to uh, negotiate different flight levels. So you could see uh, Captain Obet, we... Uh, we're nice to our colleagues, even though the flight plan has us at uh, flight level 310 for a good couple of hours. Um, we negotiated a, a flight level 330 so um, our company aircraft behind us could uh, climb and get their cruising level as well. Yeah, so right now we're uh, just past uh, Taiwan. On the way there, we'll be going along the south coast of uh, Japan, um, all the way over the ocean there couple of uh, military air force bases and then uh, end in our destination of Anchorage. All the green you can see is a little bit of rain so fortunately so it's going to be a little cold and, and wet when we get into Anchorage but uh, nothing too crazy. Much better than a week, Much, 10 days it. ago. Yeah, Hong Kong's had some bad weather the last couple of uh, weeks. We've had super typhoons and black rain and flooding. So uh, this is the first time we're just talking about it in about a month that we've uh, not had to dodge any weather on the departure out of uh, out of Hong Kong. So it uh, should be a nice, smooth flight. And uh, thank you for joining us. So hi guys, um, this is the um, EFB that we use for all our flight planning. We also use it for uh, uh, flight charts, briefings, everything is in here. Each pilot has been issued one by Cathay Pacific, so we have our own and we get all the updates directly from flight operations at Cathay. So I'll just turn it on, tell you what's on here. Uh, 
different apps of course but the main ones we use are right on the bottom here so we have a section here which we call comply 365 which essentially maintains all our operations manuals for the different fleets for example here is the Boeing fleet so for us it would be 747 manuals and we have all the aircraft registrations so depending on which aircraft you're flying you would select that today we're in this aeroplane Lima Juliet November so I could select that and it immediately gives me all the possible manuals that are co connected to this particular aeroplane specific to this aeroplane most of course all the 747-8s or 400s are identical pretty much but if there's any difference this is where you'd find out what the difference is with the uh, the aircraft the main thing so for today uh, we're using the Jefferson Flight Deck Pro which gives us the routing but in here as well is where we get the standard instrument departures for today for example we flew a departure from Hong Kong off runway 07 left and that's the departure routing you select that and we use that as part of the uh, briefing pre-departure and it gives you all the routing we also have a flight tracker which tells us exactly where we are so we're currently just coming up to Envem and Envem is just here I'll just clear that a little bit by removing some of the noise as it were like that so this is where we are we're just about there the GPS signal comes in and out sometimes I've brought these EFB in so the signal sometimes gets a little bit weaker but that's not important at the moment because we're tracking and the FMS is en route on there so we use this all the way to Anchorage it's a good thing because I can squeeze it and I can have the whole globe as you can see there and I can move the whole world yes the world is round it's not flat so you can see there so I'll bring it back up and see where we are I know I've got some friends who are members of the flat, flat Earth Society but there you go so <laughs> anyway the world is round so we're here we're going that way uh, Japan is just coming up there we'll be passing Japan just to the south of Japan and then going across the Pacific all the way to Anchorage been flying now for a total of two hours and 33 minutes and talk to any long-haul pilot they'll tell you this is a view they get used to sitting early hours in the morning wherever somewhere in the world and the sun's coming up earlier on we saw the moon come up so we had moonrise so we're just coming up to sunrise now the sun's gonna come up should come up just about there just to the right there and um, yeah it's um, a standard view bleary eyed red eyed pilots if they haven't slept well <laughs> have now the interesting thing is so the sun's just come up we're just south of Japan and if you look in the distance I can see Mount Fuji it's just coming up there I'll just raise this a little bit I don't know if you can see it a little bit but you see it as we get closer but there's Mount Fuji it's just coming up jutting out through the yeah so we'll be getting closer to it so we'll have a nice view of it on the left hand side
We have been cleared direct to Neil and uh, the Neil 6 RNAV arrival. That's on chart 10 2 Charlie. Neil 6 RNAV. Check. For 7 right. For 7 right. 7 right. That's ILS 07 right. Yeah. Uh, the Neil 6 is on 10 2 Charlie, yeah. followed by the ILS runway 07 right on 11 2. 11 2 check. ILS frequency is uh, 111 decimal 3 India Alpha November Charlie. It's parked for now. Final approach course 074. Airport elevations 151 feet. The stabilized approach point is at the final approach fix. That's Tully, 1600 feet. Check. Down to a minimum of 332 set right. 332 set left. In the event of a missed approach, it's straight ahead initially and then a right hand turn climbing to 3000 uh, direct to Jukep. In reality, it'll probably just be a right, right U-turn and maybe back, a revector. So yeah. Revector back for an uh, ILS via Vivo, most likely. Yep. Trying 8827 heavy, descend and maintain 6000. Uh, descend to 6000, United 450, descend and maintain 5000. That's 170. 5, 000, United 450. Cathay 2090 heavy, turn right heading 060, intercept the 7 right localizer. Turn right heading 060, intercept the 7 right localizer, Cathay 2090 heavy. Okay, heading 060. 060. Locking at 3 up, Romeo, reduce speed to 170. Cathay 2090 heavy, you're uh, 3 miles from Elias, cleared ILS, runway 7 right approach, maintain 170. Not Gear down. Gear down. They're quite busy today. Yeah. Altitude checked. Missed approach. Set. Check. 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 On speed, 850. On speed, 850. Speed break up. Rough green. Sixty knots. Sharon, wait three three. Cliff takeoff, caution. Wake turbulence. Cliff takeoff three three. Caution. Wake turbulence. Hey, left, 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 left Gulf. Yeah. Cathay twenty ninety heavy. Turn left to Gulf. Cross runway seven left. Then contact ground. Okay, runway seven left. Clear to cross. Room 8 is coming up. Got the marshal. Got the marshal finished with the lights. Yeah. Hi, copy it. Uh, shop in position now. Okay, good day, copy. Chops in position. Park break is set on blocks at 1 8. Nil defects. Okay, guys. Uh, so. We're here, this is Anchorage, we've just arrived. Dushan here did a good job, uh, nice landing, Thank by the way, Dushan. So we've just shut down, the airplane's now all killed, we put the uh, navigation system, the IRS off, and uh, park brake is set. The APU is now controlling the airplane as far as the power goes. And um, once we've done that, we usually shake hands and say, good job, nice Thanks flight. Thank Thank yeah. you. And uh, Thanks, Gary. Thanks yeah. very much. We uh, complete the uh, maintenance log, which is an electronic one. And then we make sure we close the flight on the uh, EFB. So I just want to see that I've synced with you because to close the flight. Sure. The flight is closed and uh, we're ready to go home. So th the next thing is uh, we're, we're flying again um, tomorrow evening back to Hong Kong. Still Dushant and myself and uh, of course Milos will be here to do his filming and, and all that. So it will be done.
question. None. Bishop, Bishop, how long have you been on the uh, 747? I've been on the fleet for seven and a half years. I joined seven and a half years ago and I've been on the jumbo the whole time. Obet uh, trained me when I first joined um, as a second officer and then when I did my upgrade to first officer as well, uh, Obet did me did my first uh, four sectors as a BTC. Every uh, upgrade in Cathay, you need to do four sectors with a BTC, which is the highest level of uh, check-in training captain and Obet's been one for a I don't know how many years. <laughs> for Yonks. See, for Yonks. He's 20, old. <laughs> 20 years or something. Yeah. yeah. More than 20 years. Yeah. And uh, for me, this, this aeroplane is very special because this was the last Boeing 747-8 delivered for Cafe Pacific in 2016. And I did that delivery flight. So its first landing in Hong Kong was on the old runway 25, right? And I did that landing. So it's my baby, LJN. And yep. um, there's a special place for it for me. She's yeah. as old as my career in Cathay. In Cathay Just yes. after I joined, yeah. uh, Obed delivered it to Hong Kong and I did one of the first flights to Anchorage. Yes. It smelled new. It felt yes. new. And Very now nice. she's seven years old. Yeah. Still the newest in the fleet, so it's yeah. still good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next stop, the hotel. Later. Thank you. Hi guys, um, I'm standing in the hotel, uh, the Sheraton Hotel here in uh, Anchorage. We're just about to leave uh, to fly back to Hong Kong and uh, my crew is just over there. Uh, we're doing a special uh, program or special filming rather with uh, Just Planes. So they're going to be filming our departure from Anchorage and flights all the way back to Hong Kong. They've done one bit already where they've filmed us departing Hong Kong and arriving in Anchorage. So I hope uh, you enjoy the whole series, of course, uh, of uh, Hong Kong to here and back to Anchorage. Anchorage is a big stop for 747, so it's, it's great that Just Planes are here to do that. Later. So hi, my name is Hon. I'm the relief pilot for this flight. I'm doing the walk around at the moment. So um, what we're looking for is uh, the general condition of the airplane, the wheels and uh, engine, and uh, if there's any eyes on top of the wings. Shall we start? So we are just trying to see if there's uh, any damage to the wheel. And uh, those are the, called the pedostatic probe on the top and uh, we just want to see if there's any cover. Just checking the general condition of the airplane, if there's anything that looks unusual, any uh, crack, any wrinkle that can suggest that they had, uh, may have had a hard landing before. Just checking the overall conditions of the wheel. Now we're checking the um, under the tail if there's any sign of scratches. That could be an indication of a tail strike. So now we just repeat the same inspection for the other side. Okay, so that's all for the exterior inspection.
positive right? Yep, yeah, you're up. Tell him that. Check. Cross with PNF speed. Check. Cathay 2091, heavy contact departure. Dispatches, Cathay 2091, good day. Air in flight 130. Dispatches, good day, Cathay 2091 Heavy, passing 1,200 on climb, 4,000 Anchorage 9 departure. Cathay 2091 Heavy, Anchorage departure, radar contact, climb and maintain flight level 200, speed is your discretion. Cathay 2091 Heavy, turn left heading 260. Left heading 260, Cathay 2091 Heavy. Select heading, select 260. Check, 260. Climb one set. More speed, thank you. Right. I do a quick scan. Once we've passed the stair up here, just to make sure everything is where it should be, and there's been no change. And that's about it. We now just monitor the climb, see if there's any weather that might affect us, and we have to go around it. But this nice clear day. This flight is one of those flights where the sun is going to be exactly in that position for the next seven hours. <laughs> so you either put your glasses on and look a bit cool, like this one, <laughs> or you use one of these, which is fine too. Good old sandwich tray. This is usually Alaska special reindeer hot dog. My pilot training in uh, 2009 in Melbourne at Moorabbin Airport um, and then shortly after that the weather has always been crap in Melbourne so I moved to country Victoria and finished my pilot training there um, with a flight school that's linked to uh, a regional airline in Australia called Sharp Airlines. Yeah. Um, we uh, we flew the Fairchild Metroliner which is a 19 seat turboprop uh, out of Adelaide. I did that for about two years uh, mainly flying in and out of uh, mining towns, um, carrying miners uh, to and from, um, you know, the mines and back into Adelaide City. Uh, that was good fun. Uh, Metroline is a quite old aircraft and uh, it was a brilliant aircraft to learn on because there was always issues, hydraulic failures, engine failures, uh, landing gear not retracting or yeah. extending. Yeah. So it was a good first aeroplane uh, to really uh, learn some skills on. And uh, shortly after that, I... Uh, interviewed for a second officer position at Cathay Pacific. I joined Cathay Pacific in uh, 2016 as a second officer. Captain Obet uh, did my first four training sectors. Um, I stayed a second officer for about four and a half years and the second officer role at Cathay is mainly a, a observing role. You're fully integrated into the cockpit team, but um, you're, you're not at the flight controls um, as such, but you get regular simulator events and the more junior you are as a second officer, you, you're in the simulator every month, so you get plenty of hands-on skills and you get to observe really experienced pilots operate day in and day out, normal operations, non-normal operations. So I did that for about four and a half years and then uh, while 2020 was a bad year for um, a lot of people, um, I was very lucky to upgrade in 2020 uh, to first officer on the 747. I've, I've joined on the 747, been on the 747 for the last uh, seven and a half years. And uh, when I upgraded the first officer again, it was Captain Obet who uh, did my initial training, my first four sectors. Uh, I think we did Penang, Phnom Penh, you know, Singapore, Penang, and then Phnom Penh, Hong Kong. Yeah. As my first four sectors uh, during my yeah, upgrade, yeah. yeah. And it's been a, it's been a good career so far. Very good, very good. Short nine years. How about you? He flew uh, into Kai Tak, which has <laughs> been closed for 26 years. Yes. <laughs> so hi guys. Uh, my name is Obet Mazini, uh, and uh, I hail from Zimbabwe. And um, I started my flying career in Zambia. 
which I call my second country actually, uh, Zambia, because um, a lot of the uh, flying skills that I have today I actually learned from a young age in Zambia. My first flying school I went to was uh, a school called Zambia Air Service Training Institute, which is uh, or ZASTI for short, mm -hmm. and I did my PPL there. Oh, and then, um, yeah, I did my PPL there through Cessna 150 and the Cessna 152, yeah. And um, we used to fly at uh, City Airport. The reason I got into flying really is because the first time I ever flew was uh, when I went uh, to boarding school with my mom. My mom took me to boarding school. We lived in, uh, in a small town called Mansa in Zambia. And I got on a Zambia Airways a DC-3. Little did I know that one day I would fly the DC-3. Anyway, got on, and uh, as I approached the airplane, I saw the pilots were up there, and I thought, wow. And uh, you know the DC-3 sits at an angle, so you yep. you walk forward holding on to the seats. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like walking up the aisle when the aircraft's yeah. climbing. Yeah. yeah. So And it was good because the pilots had the cockpit door open, and you could see. In fact, it wasn't even a door. It was actually just a curtain they had. So I could see what they were doing, and I knew then. I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to do that. I think I was only six or seven years or seven. I was just on seven years old. And um, we flew from Mansa to Ndola, Ndola to Lusaka on the DC-3. Oh. And I went to school and I was hooked from then on. When I finished my PPL, Zambia Airways sponsored a whole group of us, all of us, pretty much. And we went to the British Airways Flight Training School at College of Air Training at Hamble in the UK. And that's where I did my CPL, instrument rating, and twin rating, and all that, what people do today. It was all sponsored, so I was lucky yeah. that I didn't have to pay anything at all. So I owe absolutely everything to Zambia, and especially Zambia Airways, because when you had no money at all, this the airline comes up and sponsors people yep. and trains you, and you had to work for Zambia Airways for four years okay. minimum, basically to repay the money they'd spent. But it didn't matter because we we had a job. So the four years didn't mean anything because the intention was you're going to stay there and that, that would be your airline. Mm -hmm. After that, a few years in uh, Air Hong Kong, I joined Cathay Pacific. I've been there ever since, nearly 27 years. And I guess yeah. you joined Air Hong Kong when uh, Kai Tak was still... Uh, yeah, the, 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 the I used to fly into Kai Tak. I was based in Kai Tak with the, uh, Air Hong Kong and yeah, when Cathay. we changed to Cathay as well. Yeah. That would have there been you incredible. go. Yeah, and here I am flying the Dash 8. 747s for more than, I don't know, 20, nearly 30 years I've been flying 747s from the 100, 200, yeah.
secure checklist complete. Check. And that is it, guys. Uh, we have just done the secure checklist. Uh, we're going to step off the airplane now. I've done the maintenance log. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that trip. You probably noticed, I uh, hope you noticed that there was a little bit of weather coming into Hong Kong, which we went around and uh, managed to uh, come through unscathed, as it were. So we're back in Hong Kong, airplanes in one piece. We're happy. And Cathay Pacific, as usual, has delivered its cargo as promised to its uh, suppliers. So it's, uh, we carry everything, you know, in Cathay Pacific. We carry horses, we carry animals, we carry pigs, we carry uh, cows, we carry race cars, we carry all sorts everything. of everything, just anything you want. New iPhone 15. New iPhones, new, uh, uh, new anything, clothing. This is what we do. We carry everything and we take care of it, just as we've, you've seen on this flight. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, Dushant. Thanks for bye. joining us, and uh, looking forward to watching with you guys. Yeah, we're looking forward to watching it. Later.